I played four hours of Final Fantasy 16 and I'm very excited to share with you my experience with the game hands on back in London at the event that Square Enix held for all the content creators out there that uh, got invited to it. Shout out to my man Blitz, shout out to my girl Rhea, shout out to Square Enix and all the employees that hosted this event. You guys were all amazing and thank you. Thank you also to the cast of the game, which I didn't even get to meet because I was too shy to do so. But <laughs> next time, man, next time. But um, yeah, guys, let's get into this video, man. Let me show you what's up with this game. This video is spoiler free, so you don't have to worry about me spoiling it throughout this video. All right, let's go. If there's one thing I can say about this game is that Final Fantasy 16 starts off really strong. They quite literally just throw you straight into the action of the game. And when I finally got to my first bit of tutorial, I really did take my time. Spending 30 minutes just learning the basics of the game with no shame in my face, because combat means everything to me. And actually this video was provided by Square Enix themselves, but I did get to explore this part of the game because believe it or not, this was the actual full game. So we could have played the entire game if we just were to speedrun it. But we couldn't because time was our worst enemy. And guess what? Your first tutorial will take place in this particular area and you're going to meet Clive's mentor. And during the tutorial, I just really took my time in learning the new mechanics and abilities. And then I ventured out of the castle, which takes us to the next chapter of the game, where we then meet our companions, Sir Wade and Sir Tyler and even get to know a little bit more about our enemies or even the location where we are going next. So you can actually prepare yourself before you go out there and venture into your own death if you're not prepared, because I bet this game is gonna get challenging with story progression. But fear not, you have companions to distract your enemies for you whilst you focus on dealing damage. And next up, we have Morble. I wasn't able to show you my own gameplay, but hopefully they'll do it here. So see that key blast right there? If you key blast, wow. Sorry, I'm an anime weeb and I watch too much Dragon Ball. But anyway, that fireball magic followed by a jump dodge, followed by the fireball magic again. As soon as you land on the ground, you can go immediately into another jump every single time, allowing you to dodge backwards once again and shooting your fireball. This tech is really good for when you're facing a boss that has quick animations. For example, this guy, although he has a really slow start, so the boss we're currently fighting, Morball, um, he actually has an AoE attack that hits a wide area. So that tech I just told you about, the jump and then shooting the fireball, will allow you to then move out of the way if you're mid attack already. So go ahead and use that to your advantage. Do not forget the input, so you gotta jump, dodging, fireball magic into repeating the same moves. Jump, dodge, fireball magic. Jump, dodge, fireball magic. Got it? Let's move on. I really do like the way they present the characters, the way they introduce them giving you a backstory to how they met or what role they had in your journey, giving you an idea of what role they will play throughout the story. But let's not venture too far out from the fact that the combat is really intriguing. You can use Targle to like keep enemies airborne whilst you're doing something else. So like for example, if you're charging your attack, uh, your fire attack, you can use Targle to keep the enemy airborne and just keep mashing him. And then you can immediately close in by using Clive's instant teleport skill that he has, giving you room to be as creative as your mind can possibly be. Another really versatile option that you have with this game, during combat, you can mix your magic with your melee skills, allowing you to do different combinations each and every time you strike your enemy. What's cool about this is the fact that you can do this airborne too, so you can do this on the ground or whilst you're airborne. And Square Enix actually captured this during this video, so I will slow down the video so that you can see exactly what I mean by that. In 3, 2, 1. So right here in the bottom right corner of my screen, you can see the fire symbol animation being tapped. And as you do that, what happens is, you get this different combo variation rather than just using melee melee all the time. And also this gives you room for opening combos, for example, after you shoot him in the air, and uh, launching him, as you can see, you can use Torgo right away to chase him down or chase him up. 
and keeping them airborne so it's a really good finisher for keeping enemies airborne so that you can go back to the ground and do something more powerful that can only be activated on the ground so for anyone that played the devil may cry series you are already familiar with this kind of stuff this is the type of combo setups most of you guys are going to be using for sure and i almost forgot there is also enemy step and you know exactly what that means right if there's an enemy that's super annoying on the ground, you want to keep them as airborne as much as possible. You never want to let them touch the floor. Therefore, master your aerial combos, master your team switching with Torgo, and even activating his moves so you can keep your enemy airborne for as long as possible. And only coming back to the ground when you're ready to finish off the enemy. And for those wondering, there's gotta be a parry system somewhere in this game. There is. But how does it work? You have to strike the enemy just as he's about to strike you. And just as you do so, the game will go into a slow motion effect, allowing you to go in for killer combos and finishing your enemy. I actually didn't get to play this bit, but this is how you perform some questing in the game. So like any other RPG, you walk up to an NPC and you talk to them and then you get your quest and then you go on about your day and complete those tasks and then return to the quest giver and collect your reward. This guy right here, ladies and gentlemen, is your blacksmith. So spare some time and come and visit him, because he might be able to do some really good upgrades for you. He's located in the hideaway, alongside other shopkeepers such as Lady Charon. He's the shopkeeper in this area. So if you haven't upgraded your weapon at the blacksmith, make sure to check Lady Charon's shop, because she may just have the next upgrade for you without having to worry about the materials that you may need for them. So it's always good to keep an eye on her and the blacksmith at the same time, just so that you know if you need to be wasting material on that specific weapon that you want to upgrade. And stressing about the fact that you don't have it when you want to move on with the story, when Lady Charon might just have the weapon you want without the need of the upgrade that you can't do right now because of the materials that you lack. Do you get what I'm saying? And also, I wasn't aware of this thing where you can change music in the background whilst you're just in the hideaway. I think they had this in Final Fantasy XV as well, actually, from what I can remember. But uh, this is a really good thing because if you're just chilling and you're doing some AFK ventures at home, then you can play some music in the background and just vibe to it to your heart's content. That's how I would do it anyway. And the way to acquire new music for the Orchestrion is by either completing side quests, finding them in treasures, or even moving through the story as well, or buying them in shops. And I'm guessing treasure chests will be hard to find, therefore there would be no need in hiding them, right? They would just place it right in front of you after each and every scenario possible. But that's not the case. Therefore, stick to buying them from the shops until you want to platinum the game and you can go around and collect them all. And then ladies and gentlemen, this is the bit I played the most. I just skipped straight to chapter 4 because I was dying to find out what the combat would look like the further we were throughout the story. And boy, oh boy, I was not disappointed. This game takes combat to the next level. I was asking so many questions in regards to combat but not everything was being told to me and handed to me on the platter. So just like you, I'm going to have to wait until the release of the game so we can find out together what else can we expect with the combat in this game because this is looking unbelievable. And with that, I hope I was able to give you guys a little something something to hold you, you know, just before the game comes out. And uh, for those of you that haven't seen my post on the community wall, I'm going to show you guys my pictures that I took whilst I was at the event. So here's me, here's my ugly self, but um, yeah, the event was awesome, man. Square Enix really did take care of us, and if someone ever was to tell me that one day I'd be sitting in this castle playing video games, I'd tell them to take a walk, kindly.